Welcome back to In the Shade, a platform bringing awareness to BIPOC folks that have been murdered or gone missing and also people of color who have been accused and convicted of committing heinous crimes. I'm Jenny Wilson and I'm Isabel Ancella and this is our 15th episode. Lucky number 15. Thank you for tuning in again. <laughs> so today's episode is going to be about 35-year-old Anthony Robinson of Washington, D.C. He is a serial killer who finds his victims on dating sites, arranges meetings with them in motels, and then disposes of his victims in shopping carts. So this is our second shopping cart killer. He's connected to at least four victims, possibly five. So let's get started and let's talk about some of Anthony Robinson's victims. So you have Aline Elizabeth Beth, May Redmond, who's 54, of Harrisonburg, Virginia. Redmond reportedly went missing at the end of October 2021. So that's like pretty recent. Yeah. So Beth went out on October 24th telling her family that she was going to go uh, watch a football game. You know, go hang out with her friends, do yeah. whatever, you know. Um, but she was going to go watch a football game at the Howard Johnson on Linda Lane in Harrisonburg, Virginia, with a friend named Ant. Such an interesting, like, name. I don't know. <laughs> but uh, her daughter said she had never heard of that name before, which, like, would obviously be alarming, you know, if, like, oh, I'm going to go hang out with Ant, and you've never heard who yeah. Ant was. Kind of, like, strange. But Roughly one month later in November, her body was found near that of Tanita Loris Smith, who was mm-hmm. 39, of Charlottesville. She was found in an empty lot in the city of Harris, uh, Harrisonburg. Smith was reported missing on November 19th, 2021. So, again, like still super recent. Yeah. And was last seen on November 14th. So, her cell phone records do show and the video surveillance linked to Robinson to the uh, woman's murders, according to Harrisonburg police chief. Robinson was charged with two counts of first-degree murder, two felony counts of concealing, transporting, or altering a dead body, and those two homicides. Oh, I don't know. Just, like, saying that, like, gives me the heebie-jeebies. And he's currently being held at Rockingham County Jail on those charges. Let's uh, kind of unpack that. Yeah. So he met Beth mm-hmm. um, October 24th, and her daughter said she's never even met this guy. Never even heard of him. Doesn't even know who the man is. And then the mom just doesn't come home from that watch party, and she's reported missing the end of October 2021. Yeah. Interesting. Yeah. This not it's terrible. Yeah, it's so messed up. And then a month later, in November, her body was found in a shopping cart in an empty lot in Harrison. so messed up. Yeah. Like, I, can't, I don't know. It's also shocking that they ended up finding two bodies. Yeah, like, that's super alarming to me. You know what I mean? You don't yeah. find one, you find two. Which is, like, just overall, like, super terrifying. Yeah, and the two are not related to each other. Yeah, not related at all. He killed, like, a family or whatever. Yeah. It's two different women that went missing at different times. Mm -hmm. Because you said Tonita went missing November 14th. Yeah. And Beth went out October October 24th. 24th. Yep. So he just decided... To dump Tonita's body in the same place as Beth's. It was really interesting. Unless he, I doubt that he would keep Beth's body. I was body. thinking, like, did he, like, keep the body? You know what I mean? Because, like, I don't know. took them out at the same, same time. time. But it's like, but where, but where are you keeping them? Because even, like, in that short period of time, the body's already starting to decay. So you're yeah. going to notice, like, things smelling. Yeah. So it's kind of like, well, what, what did you do with the other body then, right? Yeah. But, I don't know. That I feel like he probably dumped one 
murder Tanita and then yeah. dumped her. And I was like, oh, let me go back. Yeah. I, I know a good spot. Yeah. <laughs> no one's found her yet, so let me go back. You know <laughs> yeah. what I mean? So that's what I kind of think that, like, he did, too. Like, he literally was like, I know a good spot, so let me just, like, put one body here. Oh, you know what? That was such a great spot. I'm going to do it again. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. It's so interesting, but. So, yeah, in December, uh, police uh, in Fairfax County decided to go back to the Moon Inn Hotel in Alexandria, Virginia, which was um, near that initial area where um, where those other two bodies were found, I yeah. guess. And um, because they knew that he liked to dispose of victims using a shopping cart and also in wooded areas, they decided to look at the wooded area near that motel. Okay. And that is where they ended up finding another shopping cart. And adjacent to that shopping cart, they found a plastic container. Mm. And then the um, commander of Fairfax County um, said that they observed two different sets of human remains Ugh. in that plastic container. So maybe he has a thing for the number two also. <laughs> maybe he likes to kill in twos. Yeah, maybe he likes to kill in or twos. Or dispose in twos. But it's just like, in pairs. how are you storing this? Shit? Yeah. You know what or I mean? In a plastic like, container. Um, I know, right? Like, obviously. But must, aware, be, must be a really sturdy one. Yeah. <laughs> like, I just don't get it. And so when the police found these two sets of human remains, they obviously brought them to the office of the medical examiner. And the authorities authorities said that the decomposition of those bodies was so bad that they are having a really hard time identifying them. Mm. But they believe that one of the victims is 29-year-old Cheyenne Brown. Mm. And so the reason why they think it is her is um they have like digital data which i don't n- know exactly if that's like surveillance data or like cell phone data or mm. something but they have digital data that showed that brown was at the moon inn mm. on the night of her disappearance and robinson was staying at the moon inn at the same time and Mm. he was actually also the last person to be seen with cheyenne when she was alive interesting and she was last seen on thursday september 30th so Mm. before those initial two murders even and was reported missing uh, by the washington dc metropolitan police on october 12th and yeah, the police uh, worked closely with the Metro Transit Police and found video surveillance showing Brown at a metro station on September 30th. Mm. So that's how they knew that was the last time she was seen. Gotcha. Yeah. And unfortunately, she was also four months pregnant. So <sighs> that part is so sad. That, that should count as two murders. Yeah, that should count as two. We, I was going to say something. We don't have to go. Yeah. I was going to say something. But, but yeah, so when they found that plastic container uh, where the women were found, they actually also found flyers for missing 48-year-old Stephanie Harris. Mm-hmm. Um, I don't know if you want to kind of chat about that. Oh, yeah, for sure. So the police in Fairfax County are working with the police in Reading to, like, confirm if she is the fourth victim mm-hmm. or not. Okay, that's fair. So then based on the flyers and recent check-in records, we believe Stephanie Harrison stayed at the same hotel as the suspect. Okay. Which clearly like he's staying like based on the pad and wherever kind of people are staying, he's like, Oh yeah, my precious, Mm -hmm. you know what I mean? Whatever. So which is like really fucked up. But so working with authorities in California, as well as her family to obtain a DNA uh, sample for further analysis, and then on top of that, there's also a possible fifth victim, <laughs> like as if this shit couldn't get any weirder. So with the possible fifth, fifth victim um, has been identified in the Washington, D.C. area, of course, that's kind of where he like had started his whole like, 
I could say like killing spree in a sense. Right. But again, we don't know if he actually started there or not because they're just like trying to scan everywhere just to mm-hmm. kind of see like, you know, is his DNA connected to anything else? Anyways, but we'll touch base on that. So with the possible fifth victim, Sonia Champ was identified in January 2022. So that's like crazy recent, yeah. you know, like beginning of the year. That investigation first began September 7th in 2021. Mm -hmm. so a woman was found dead in a shopping cart only covered with a blanket that's like so chilling just to even like think about that and then like and then the digital evidence puts robinson in the area um around the time of her disappearance so not only uh, allegedly like he's killing victims again at his that are like staying in his hotel or like near there but then also people that are like he's like do like he has a pattern of killing people and then putting them in shopping carts. You know what I mean? So yeah. it's like very There's a lot of things connecting connect him to, to him to like all of this like f- mess like, up there's shit. There's definitely a pattern that yeah. he's following. Like he's definitely following a pattern for sure. Yeah. So in the, the next thing that we want to talk about is kind of like the how. So yeah. kind of br- like part of his pattern. Yeah, part of his pattern and just like uh, what's happening like kind of how did he get started? So Brown met Robinson on the dating app Plenty of Fish. We are not trying to scare you for dating apps, but it's just like these are the stories that I think it's our third our third dating app one. Yeah. So just be careful. The first it was like Bumble and then I think the other one may have been I don't know if it was Grinder, but then now we have plenty of fish. Yeah. So just, you know, just be aware and like of your surroundings and don't meet someone at a motel or like a hotel, you know what I mean? Like Yeah, that seems interesting too that he's meeting these people on these apps and then they're they seem to be traveling quite far for yeah. just to meet him yeah that's like what i don't get from like from charlottesville to all the way where he was like you yeah. know what i mean that's like that's far yeah the other one from redding california that's so far that, that that's literally like how do you even i wonder also too like what like how like how are you like oh you're in virginia <laughs> you, yeah you know what i mean like he also could low-key be like catfishing people too that's also true yeah so yeah. he could be like catfishing and like saying oh yeah i'm having a party like you sh- you can come over and watch like with the um yeah. with the mom like oh yeah i'm having a party like come over and watch a football game at my place and then you show up and you're like wait a hotel like you know like wait a mm-hmm. hotel and then at that moment like you're fully like fucked like you were like trapped like you're yeah. in his like space now you know so and also maybe people are assuming because it's a motel, it's like still a public place. Yeah. And but it's, it's like, not no, really. No. Yeah. Like, Especially leave. if you're in a room. Yeah. yeah. It's like leave that. And you yeah. might as well have gone to his house. You yeah. know what I'm saying? Yeah. Like, because at that point it kind of is too, which is interesting. But the interesting part though is investigators believe Robinson uses the dating app as well as a dating app called Tag, which I was not familiar with. I've never heard of it I have never heard of Tag before. Um, Have you ever used Tag? Let us know. I know. Let us know. Have you guys used Tag before? I'm not familiar with it. But so he's like clearly like luring his victims in with these dating apps. And again, like we said, we don't know if he's like catfishing them or what or like what he's saying. He could kind of be similar to Samuel Little where he's just like, just comes kind of, across like genuine yeah. you know what might i mean be like a charmer a charmer yep exactly like a charmer like oh you know i would yeah. never do anything like that for you i respect him i respect your boundaries clearly he doesn't yeah and some of the victims that he's going for are much older than him too which is interesting so he might be i don't know it might be like he might be trying to go for women that are like trying to get back into the dating game and they just don't know oh, what to like yeah. look out for, what's yeah. creepy and dangerous. Oh, yeah. And they may also too think that it's like normal to meet at like someone's like yeah. house or something. You know what I mean? Like you just maybe, yeah. they, I mean, some people do that. We don't recommend doing that. But yeah, you just never know. It could be people like recently divorced or widow, like vulnerable. You know mm-hmm. what I mean? So like, yeah, that too. They might be, um, you know, getting out of, tough situations exactly. and just be really vulnerable and he's just preying on he's them. He's just literally preying on them. It's so fucked yeah. up. Yeah. And then um, he inflicts trauma to his victims and kills them. He transports their bodies to their final resting place, literally like in a shopping cart. Like literally like, oh, like he's like, let's say he like stabs somebody or whatever and then is like, oh, you're dead. Okay, time to go. And then puts them in a shopping cart. First of all, where do you get the shopping cart from? How are you storing this? 
And how do you get it into a hotel? Without everyone thinking that you're, like, weird. Yeah. Like, I always wonder, like, especially, well, you know what? If he's, like, in a shady motel, you know, like, the Motel 6 where you, like, open, like, you literally open the door and you're, like, right there with the gravel. So it could be, what I'm thinking is, like, let's say, like, he kills them, right? And if it's, like, a shady motel, you know, like, you know what I mean? Like, the shady yeah, motels yeah, yeah. look, like, super weird and people, like, go there maybe to, like, I don't know, like, do, do drugs, drugs or, or like, whatever. whatever. Then, like, I can see a shopping cart, like, not being weird there. But it was at the but Holiday Inn. But he's also Inn. putting a body in a shopping cart. That's what cart. I mean. That's, I wonder if he, like, wraps them up. Like, you know what I mean? Like, but even that seems that weird. That seems like, weird, too. There should be, like, video cameras at these I projects. know. But, if, yeah. Are there not? I know. That's, like, the weird part, too. This is what the digital data is that they're talking about. I know. Like, can we tell us what exactly you mean by digital data? Or maybe, <laughs> like, what the fuck does that even mean? It's but like a tweet or something. Or maybe people think that, like, he is, like, room service. Because what oh. else? What would you need, like, a shopping cart for? Yeah. You know what I'm saying? But then I just, like, I guess for me, it's, like, unless you have, like, a, black, a blacked out shopping cart, we all can kind of assume that that's, like, going to be a body. You know? Yeah. But he's, obviously, he's, like, doing it late at night when no one's seeing, but... I just thought that part was like super, super kind of just yeah. weird. I don't, I don't know, but so a little bit of, uh, about Anthony Robinson. He did not have a prior criminal record. Uh, he did live a somewhat transient lifestyle, kind of moving around a lot and holding various jobs in multiple cities. Officials believe that there are likely even more victims. Um, because, like, even beyond D.C. Mm. and the East Coast, just because he's been living this, like, transient lifestyle. Yeah. Um, so, yeah, there could be a lot more than five victims. Oh, I totally believe it. With someone that's, like, this capable of doing something this reckless, there totally has to be more victims. Yeah. And so the police have scanned through... All of the missing persons cases from 35 police departments in the D.C. area to see if there are more mm. victims that match similar profiles of like yeah. shopping carts or wooded areas or something like that. And they're also working with the FBI and authorities in New York, which is his original home state, right. to get just like more information about him and mm. his history and just to create like a victimology kind of profile. Mm. Um, and kind of like a, an update on the initial charge for Beth and um, Tonita Loris Smith. He's still only charged um, for those two original murders. Mm. He's only the suspect in the other two murders mm. in the plastic bin for uh, Cheyenne Brown and um, Stephanie Harrison. And he's also just kind of considered a suspect for the fifth one mm. uh, that was only identified a couple of months ago yeah. for Sonia Champ. And so he is jailed without bail mm. and is scheduled for uh, a hearing in September. Mm, 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 mm. Lock him up. Yeah. <laughs> like, don't let that man go. He is absolutely terrifying. Like, I just don't know why he would, I like, ever get out. You know what I yeah. mean? Like, he's literally did something, like, so, like, twisted and just bizarre and just, like, the thought process behind it. I like wonder what he was thinking when he was doing mm -hmm. these like killings and like putting yeah. people in shopping carts. Hopefully Just, we can learn more after that court hearing. Yeah. I honestly like, we'll definitely keep you guys updated because um, this is going to be a fucked up case. Yeah. There's one other interesting thing about this case and it's the defense lawyer for Anthony Robinson. Mm -hmm. He's actually filed a motion asking the court to order the police to stop referring to Anthony as a serial killer or as the shopping cart killer. Interesting. Oh, okay. Because, that makes sense. Because mm. um, they feel that the police is like feeding the media mm. terms like mm -hmm. serial killer in an 
attempt to kind of like prejudice the public about yeah. him, especially considering that he's only only considered a suspect for the other uh, bodies that were found. Right, right, he's right. He's not officially um, considered a. Uh, he's not officially considered uh, the murderer. Right. Like he's not been charged with those. Yeah. Like they don't want to taint his suspect. name. Yeah. yeah. They don't want to like, taint his, his good name that he has. Like, I don't understand how he would have a good name killing people and putting them in shopping carts, but who knows? Yeah. So they, yeah. they want him to be referred to as the killer of two murders. Mm. And only the accused of other ones. Of other ones. Okay. Yeah. Which is so many words. So much. It's like <laughs> so, like, it's so bad. I just, like, don't understand how yeah. this shit is going down right now. But I, was, I would hate to be his lawyers. <laughs> Can you, yeah. like, I always, like, like, people, well, like, the defense attorneys and stuff, I'm always like, how do you, like, defend someone that did something so cruel? But then it's yeah. like, you got to, like... You can't take it personally. Like, as much as it sucks, like, it's really fucked up. But, like, there's sometimes where, you, like, that's a situation where you just cannot take it personally. And, like, you, like, I understand where they're coming from because that's literally their job. But then it's just, like. How do you make that your you, job to defend murderers? I don't know. I hope they get paid a lot of money yeah. <laughs> because I could not do it. Like, I don't know how you can support someone who it's very obvious. Like he blatantly did it. And then to know that you have to like defend him too, which is really like cringy. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like it might also be kind of like, a um, they just like the extra challenge. You oh know? yeah. Yeah. Like, I want to try to get this person out of it mm. to show how good of a lawyer I am, not um, of how good this individual yeah. is. Oh, that makes sense. I can see that. That makes sense. It's yeah. more like a personal goal, yeah. which is kind of messed up that yeah. you're fighting to release people mm. who have committed terrible crimes. I know. It's so fucked because up. Because of your own personal I know. It's kind of weird. And also, too, I guess my mind looks at it this way, too, about, like, the not taking it personal part. Like, think about, like, how we work for, like, these large corporations that do really fucked up stuff, but we still go to work. That's fair. You know what I mean? So it's kind of like... We're no better. Yeah. So, because, I mean, like, I'm, I'm uh, like, yeah. Like, we know what where we work and stuff. <laughs> so, yeah. but, yeah, it's like you look at what these, like, some of these corporations do, and it's kind of just like, ah, Still gonna go to work yeah. though. You know what yeah. I mean? Like totally. That's totally like I can. So that's where I, my mind's like, okay, I can see where they're coming from because it's like a switch, right? Like, of course he, they probably go home and they're like, can't believe the motherfucker did it. I gotta do this mm-hmm. shit. But then like in court they're like, we'll see this, this, and this. You know what I mean? So it's like ah, uh, it's like I'm, solving a puzzle. Yeah. Cause did you did you like keep up with the Johnny Depp case? No. Not okay. Really. Like I mean. <laughs> Yeah. It was, like, really... I caught, like, glimpses of it. Yeah, like... Like, the stuff that was turned into memes. Yeah, and right. See, that stuff's hilarious. But, like, his, like, Johnny Depp's, like, ex-wife, Amber Heard, right, mm-hmm. if I'm not mistaken? Okay. She literally... Like, imagine being, like, the lawyer that has to defend... That has to defend her when, like, she shit next to her husband. Like, <laughs> she, like in bed. Like, woke up and there's shit on the bed. Like, how do you... <laughs> how do you defend that so, so fucked up they both did like fucked up shit so i'm not saying she's any better than him because yeah. they both are equally fucked up but it's just like how do you like how do you talk about that like in a courtroom you know yeah. or like how do you defend like it must be hard to defend like that behavior you know what i mean so that's what i'm thinking maybe for his attorneys but I just kind of look at it as, like, us going to work, working for companies that have done fucked up shit, and then, like, being like, oh, yeah, but I, I still want to be sustainable today. <laughs> yeah. You know what I mean? Let me recycle this little <laughs> piece of plastic. I know, and it's like, <laughs> what the fuck? Yeah. Like, I'm not going to say, I'm not going to say where I work, but, you know, it's like. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I'm not going to say it, but it's kind of like. Yeah. yeah 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 that's yeah so it's kind of yeah it's like it's yeah i don't know it's just the whole the world in general it's just like there's so many things that don't make sense and they're all like low-key kind of like fucked up but i definitely would say 
Cooper's attorneys, they have a lot to like kind of deal with because like it, it's so obvious that he did it. Yeah. But I don't know how like do they um I wonder if there's any like mental health like issues. But he had no prior convicted like uh, no prior criminal convictions, records, criminal but records. They, but we they, don't know. We don't know anything about his mental health. Because it's so like the case is like literally like so new. Mm-hmm. So I wonder if like the yeah. maybe those happen to that of like insanity or something. Because like it's just weird what he did was just weird. Yeah, and the fact that he's just disposing of them in pairs. Yeah. But killing them at different times. Killing them at different times, and then like returning to some scenes yeah i don't know i just like don't get it he's yeah. a very strange man honestly but but also seems like he's sloppy because he like left flyers yeah <laughs> to basically tell them that there's another body somewhere i know like why would you do that like, like who do you think you are the boogeyman <laughs> you know what i mean like what are you doing like what the fuck like i'm gee, didn't I think, think it's through no he's like oh they're not gonna get me like it's like yes they are you're being really obvious and you're being <laughs> super sloppy by the way you are a sloppy serial killer that is yeah. not okay like i don't know people are just like weird people are so strange honestly you just never know who you're gonna meet but obviously like dating apps it's weird beware how, yeah beware but then it's weird how like so we'll do these cases about dating apps right but i literally have friends that like got married off of someone that they met on tinder you know so yeah, it's like, yeah. it like goes it's so weird it goes it like go both ways. it can go both ways same with like even meeting somebody in person like you don't totally. know you haven't had time to like you know, like run a criminal background check on them on, you know, by using yeah. Google or like even getting their social security. I won't tell you how to do that. But well, I will say, am I a glorified FBI agent? Good enough. But, you know, so it's just kind of like with dating apps and like meeting in person or work or whatever. You just never really know. But yeah. that does, just like, meet them in it. public places. Yeah, public places. A couple of times. Tell to your kind friends. Of vet them out. Yeah. Tell your friends where you're going share, and when. Share your location. Yeah, yeah, like yeah. make sure to do all of that shit because you just legitimately never know. Totally. Like, I mean, I I think I told you I went on a on a uh, camping trip with a girl that I met um, and uh, that I met like at at work and like virtually, obviously. And I'm like, oh, she's cool. Like we're friends, you know, whatever. I still sent my location to my friends. I still let my <laughs> my, yeah. my people know where especially I was going. With camping, yeah, especially with camping. We were like in the middle of nowhere, where you literally need a court. Like we on BLM land in uh, Colorado, you literally need coordinates to get there. Like it's mm-hmm. not like something where you're like GPS, take me to you know. No, there was like no. I had no service for like two and a half, three days. Of course, I told my friends. Yeah, like even though absolutely. this girl is cool. I don't know her. I just met her. I just met her on Zoom. Totally, you know what I mean. Totally. So it's like even with friends or doing stuff like that, or just any time, just share your location. Be safe because yeah. you just never know who you're like you're getting in bed with. To be honest with you, yep. like you have honestly like no idea. Like, I've met some people and I'm like, you're terrifying, like legitimately. And then I'm like, yeah, I probably should not have like hung out with them. <laughs> like now that I think about it, so now I'm like, it's always in hindsight. It always is in hindsight. Like that crazy dude who was like, and that's kinda, very lucky if it's in hindsight yeah. and not like once you're under the ground. <laughs> I know exactly. I know. I had a friend um, who uh, like knew this like uh, I don't know who's dating this guy who ended up having like a police report against his ex girlfriend, but like had a police report against him, and she didn't like she didn't know, and like she later found out like because she found the ex-girlfriend on Facebook and she, like, posted a picture, like, so happy I'm out of that situation and, like, took a picture of her police report or whatever. Girl, I kid you not. The guy was, like, a sociopath, like, absolutely a huge narcissist. And, like, he had a – the girl had a restraining order against him. Oh, my god. And my friend's, like, dating this guy and he was, like, the master, like, manipulator and she didn't know. Oh, no. Yeah, like, totally gaslighting her, would get, like, angry, all this stuff. But, like – she just didn't know you know what i mean Mm -hmm. like people have when you're in it sometimes you just like don't you don't know who you're getting yourself in with when you like meet these people off dating apps oh and again same in person too or in real life yeah yeah. totally yeah food for thought because that's um just be uh careful especially we're in like crazy times right now too just share your location thank you (laughs) yep share your location um that's the advice that we have for you yeah. for this episode. Oh my god. And that's... with that, <laughs> this is our 15th episode. Thank you for listening and we're in the shade. Thank you. Thank you.